Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today I am talking about something very exciting, which is that my husband and myself and my little doggie are planning on leaving New Zealand to go to Europe. And I will tell you exactly where um, at the end of this video, so stay tuned. For a little bit of background, um, I'm a Kiwi. I was born here, um, my mum was born here, my dad was born in the UK, and all of my grandparents were born in the UK. My husband is Australian, his mum and dad were both born in Australia, his maternal grandparents are Dutch, and then his dad's side is like true blue Australian, um, and I think there's Irish heritage in there. So we're both pretty Kiwi and Australian, and I know that a lot of people watching this We'll be very jealous of that. <laughs> I totally understand that. Like, um, growing up in New Zealand or Australia is is a very cool thing, and we are both very lucky to have had that and to live in such nice countries. And as much as we appreciate that, we are at the point now where we feel like we want a change, and it feels like the right time to do that. A little bit of background on myself and him. We have both lived, worked, studied overseas previously. So I worked as an au pair in Italy for three months. I did an exchange to a university in the UK for four months. And then I also took a six month break from my degree and lived and worked in New York City. So I've been around a little bit. He did a two year degree in the States and has also traveled a lot for music things around Europe and um, Asia and North America, going to different events for, you know, a few weeks at a time. So we both like to get out and explore. And obviously within the context of COVID, we were not really able to do that. So there is a little bit of sort of pent up wanting to get out there. Like I have been to, New Zealand, obviously, because it's where I am right now, and Australia in the last five years, but I haven't been anywhere else, and that kind of blows my mind. <laughs> the last time I was overseas, I believe, was 2018, so that was six years ago, overseas aside from New Zealand and Australia. So that's kind of crazy for me, and it's even more crazy because my husband will be going on leave at least for um, his job, which is a full-time orchestral job. And those are very hard to come by. But with everything that we sort of have on our plate right now in terms of what our priorities feel like and what we feel like we're getting here, this still feels like the right choice for us. So the specifics on why we are just not vibing with New Zealand <laughs> at the moment um, are, I can't really categorize them. I'll just sort of come out and say them because this is sort of a very raw and honest video as to how we're feeling. I, I know that a lot of people will just be shaking their heads and sighing and face palming and being like, Laura, why are you leaving New Zealand? I would give anything to go there. And that's totally fine. And that's totally valid. And maybe a few years from now, I will feel like that. And I will just want to be back in New Zealand. And I can totally see that happening. However, right now I'm kind of sick of the place. <laughs> and I laugh because it's, it's, it, it's true. It's, it's, it just is true. It's really, really true. So, uh, things that I that, that are just grating on me right now in New Zealand. New Zealand is very well known for its clean green image, right? And a lot of our economy is based on tourism, which I personally believe is based a lot on that clean green image, right? Like people can go and see, you know, the ocean in their country, right? But if they want to come see the ocean with dolphins and penguins and no um, wind turbines or offshore oil rigs or smog or whatever, they come to New Zealand, right? And that's based on the clean green thing. That is based on us preserving our natural environments, that it's unspoiled and all of that. And I think <laughs> that the hypocrisy of it is getting to me because New Zealand is not very good in my mind at actively protecting its clean and green environment. And I think that the 
the sort of two-facedness of it, of saying that we're super clean and green whilst not doing enough to protect that is just really difficult and frustrating to witness and to be a part of. And it becomes this little kind of echo chamber a bit where we say how wonderful and clean and green we are, but then we also say that we should be allowed to have as many dairy cows per hectare as we want because it's totally fine. Whereas there are so many studies showing that that's extremely damaging to the environment and to our water sources and to our um, ability to produce food long term and all of this. And I know that this is much more well known in other places. And in New Zealand, it seems like we're just kind of like, la, 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 la. And I, and I get sick of it. So the clean green side I feel is going downhill. Our new council here in Auckland has taken away a whole bunch of rubbish bins. And so there is just rubbish blowing around the streets far more than there used to be. Our sewerage system here in Auckland is really terrible. And so anytime there's a big rain, I'll be walking down the street with Bailey and there'll be toilet paper on the footpath because the sewerage system has overflowed onto the street. That happens regularly. There are beautiful places around Auckland to go visit. Um, obviously, if you get down to like the South Island, especially, there's some really beautiful places to get to, but that's not super accessible for us on like a daily, weekly basis. Um, we, we were meant to go do a 10 day camper van trip um, in 2021. And that was when we had our big, massive COVID lockdowns. So we obviously had our 2020 lockdowns. And then again, we were basically locked in Auckland for four months. In 2021. So anyway, it then took another two years before we were able to get to the South Island properly to go to go do things. Um, so it's not super accessible. And the stuff that is available in Auckland, I still feel like is not that accessible. Um, like yes, we have beautiful beaches nearby, but Piha is an hour's drive away, and those are dangerous roads. And they are often closed when there has been bad weather. So again, not the most accessible. Um, we like taking Bailey to Kohimarama Beach, which isn't far from us. But again, I can we can take him there on the weekend once, but there is no way I could get there on a weekday. The traffic would mean that I would take 45 minutes of driving to get there in the morning or the evening and then needing to get back and then everything else I do. So a lot of the time I just end up walking him around the streets here, just up and down past some houses. So I feel like we're not able to get the benefit of the beautiful nature and environment here in New Zealand because we're not like rich enough to live right next to it. And our infrastructure is set up such that if you're not right next to it, it's not very accessible. So that's, that's sort of my, my beef there. Speaking of the infrastructure, I already kind of mentioned about the sewerage system, um, which is just gross and just, ugh. it's not that it necessarily affects me every day. Like I can walk over it, whatever. It's just the, it's the short sightedness. It's the fact that this has been a known issue for so long and still hasn't been sorted. Um, that just kind of feels a bit quintessentially New Zealand for me, is that there's a lot of big, long-term debilitating issues that we have in our country that are just not being addressed. And you may say that that's every country and that's totally fine. But I've come up with a phrase recently, which is that sometimes you just need to go bang your head against a different brick wall. <laughs> um, and I think that for me, it's the hypocrisy. It's us saying that we're totally fine. It's all good. Don't worry about it, mate. She'll be right. Well, actually it really sucks. Same with our roads, same with our public transport. Even just this week, I was not able to get into work because all of the trains were not going to Britomart, which is basically just like, imagine if, um, if <laughs> the Berlin Hauptbahnhof just shut down for like three days. You can go around, but you can't actually get to the main station or like they just shut down King's Cross for three days. That's kind of what it felt like. And I didn't even know about it till the day. And I do try to keep up with these updates, but it's just not as obvious as it should be. <sighs> Our new government is planning to do a lot more in terms of what I would call environmental destruction and increasing inequality in this country, which I also think is disgusting. Um, they've disestablished the Māori Health Authority, which was seeking to improve health outcomes for Māori Pacifica and I am guessing other marginalised groups in New Zealand which again, I think is disgusting that they would do that. 
And so there's a lot of things there that I just feel are going downhill that are really getting to me and really making me feel disenfranchised and like, I kind of don't want to be here right now, to be honest. Um, there's also just things that exist in other parts of the world that don't exist here. And so that's also why we're not looking at Australia at this time. Although my husband's family is in Australia and we would love to be closer to them and to be able to spend more time with them, it doesn't feel like enough of a change to be going to Australia. Um, it's very similar cultures. It's basically just as far away from the rest of the world. It's maybe a tiny bit easier to get to the rest of the world from Australia. But it's also where Josh grew up and, you know, that was his stomping grounds for a lot of, a lot of his childhood. And I think that we both just kind of want to get away from the stomping grounds and just get to something different. So, where are we going? <laughs> we looked quite seriously at Canada. Uh, reasons for that, uh, I have some family in Canada. Our best friends in the whole wide world are in Vancouver. Um, we can speak the language. English, I mean, we're both terrible at French, so we'd have to move to the English speaking part. Um, it's a lot closer to the rest of the world, so, and my husband studied in the States, and so we'd be a lot closer to the States. Um, I, when I visited Canada, so I visited in summer of 2017, um, I got along so well with the Canadians. And when I was on exchange in the UK as well, again, got on so well with the Canadians. So like, I know that as a people, we would get along really well. Um, I really love the Canadians. They're very fun. They're very cool. But um, we just couldn't find the right sort of opportunity for us. Uh, if we moved without sort of having a job specifically to move to, it would be to Vancouver. However, Vancouver is even more expensive than Auckland. And I feel like we are struggling with how expensive Auckland is already. So moving somewhere else where I feel that the... Um, that the pay would not keep up with what we are getting here, it would sort of just be making it harder on ourselves. We'd be in a new place that's more expensive, receiving less money, and I think that we'd be starting with sort of too much of an uphill battle there. So we are definitely still open to Canada and to the States in future, but we decided that that was a no for now. As we were kind of looking at Canada and like considering Australia and why it is that we really wanted to leave New Zealand and all of this, we kind of took a step back and instead of trying to focus on like find a solution, find the place we want to go, we decided to try to be really, really honest with ourselves about what it was that was, that was really getting to us in New Zealand. Like what was it that was bringing us down that we wanted to try have an improvement on wherever we went and also what was it that we really you know sort of the getting rid of the negatives we got that but what are the positives that we want to get like what are the things that we really do want to see wherever we're going and so we took some time we went for a couple of brunches and just kind of spitballed a bit and talked about things and I, I mean firstly that was a really great experience like you're in relationship with someone for I mean we've been together five and a half years now, um, married for a year and a half. Is that correct? Oh wait, now I need to think about this. Yes, that is correct. We got married after four years, so we've been together five and a half years. There we go. <laughs> um, in that time, your feelings and thoughts and opinions on things can shift and change. And so I think it was a really great level setting activity for us to not only like hear from the other person genuinely what they were thinking, but to also reflect in on, our, on ourselves to go, hey, what is it that I'm really feeling about this? Because I kind of think I know myself, but do I really? Is, is, can I really articulate what it is that I'm thinking? And so that was a really cool exercise. And the things that we came up with were that we hate having to drive everywhere. We just, we, we, we hate it. Um, <laughs> we hate it. How to summarize it better, Laura? <laughs> And uh, this, this was sort of confirmed when, when my husband did go for a trip to the country that we're looking at moving to um, earlier this year and was just able to get around by train between cities and then also by trains and trams and buses and whatever um, within the cities and how frequent and easy to use and accessible it was. And that's something that we really want to be a part of. We like walking places, we like biking places, we like taking public transport places, and we live in a city 
that does not support that. I've spoken before about how I was hit by a car on my bike, riding as safely as I possibly could. This city is not made for biking, and I want to live in a city that is made for biking, not just for myself and for him, but also so we can put the dog in the little trailer behind us and it'll be adorable. And we're also wanting to have kids and we think that that would be a great experience for them. So we wanted to live somewhere that was more walkable, livable generally. And so based on that, we were looking at Europe because the cities are just set up for that. We also wanted to be able to speak the language and or the language be something that we think that we would enjoy learning so that if we were having kids there, then our kids could be bilingual and we could absolutely support that. We, I don't want to give it away too soon. <laughs> we also wanted there to be good um, like healthcare available, good childcare, um, good just general support for citizens, not citizens, sorry, for people living in that country and just general good support for people living in that country, like a government who cares about providing services that help to improve the lives of everyone. So good funding for parks and for, I mean, sports, sure. New Zealand and Australia has a lot of funding for, for sports and very little for arts, and my husband is a full-time musician, so more funding than either New Zealand or Australia for arts would be, would be lovely. <laughs> we wanted to be able to explore nature, be able to have decent jobs, um, good food, to meet friends, to be closer to Northern Hemisphere and to have that more accessible. My husband's job means that uh, when we move, he would be wanting to do auditions for orchestras. And so being in Europe means that we could much more easily than if we were in New Zealand or Australia, do auditions in Europe or in Canada or in the States. And so that just frees that up for us a lot more. So the kicker is that I learned German in high school for five years and I feel very suited to the language. I visited twice. Um, the first time um, was with my boyfriend at the time. We went to Stuttgart. We went to the opening of the Christmas markets. We didn't know it was the first day, but it was. Um, this was like late November in 2015. I had to look this up recently as I started doing my visa application. And I remember that I was listening to the Christmas story that was being told and like the kids were on the stage and I was half translating it for my boyfriend at the time. And we'd been in Germany for about 24 hours at that point. My brain just gets it. Um, I also really like the people. I know that people can find Germans to be very abrupt, um, but I'm a very straight up person as well, and I appreciate that. My husband also learned German for two years at university as like a, like a minor sort of general education alongside his music. Being a trumpet player, um, I mean, I would call Germany like the home of brass. So there is so much music going on in Germany. The funding for public television, public radio, public orchestras, music funding, music venues, recording studios, um, all of that is just miles ahead in comparison to what we have, particularly in New Zealand and still a lot more than in Australia. It is a little bit better in Australia, but there's just so much going on. So later this year, we're looking at around either November or December, we will be moving, myself, Josh, and Lil Bailey, we will be moving at this stage to Hanover in Germany. Uh, the reason we're moving to Hanover is because it is semi-central, <laughs> which is good. Um, it's not as expensive, uh, so it's sort of a better place to start. Um, we'll be looking for a one-year lease there to get ourselves going. And also there are some great people there for my husband to do trumpety things with to sort of get the German trumpet scene under his belt. He has already bought two German trumpets, a B flat and a C. If that means anything to you, please let me know down below. <laughs> but that is our plan. So it's currently June. We are going to try to get our house finished in the next couple of months get our house listed on the market. We are fully selling our house and moving over so that we have that money behind us. Um, we will be coming over on opportunity visas, which means that we can live, work, part-time, study, 
learn language, I don't know, do babysitting, like <laughs> whatever, travel around for up to a year. And then at that point, um, hopefully I would have a full time job um, in a German speaking company, um, hopefully with them understanding that I might still need English sometimes, but I, we both really want to integrate. We both really, really want to integrate in terms of the language and the culture and just go out and live our lives doing something different, just doing something different and really embracing it. So um, if you are, <laughs> if you are looking forward to seeing the experience of a Kiwi and an Australian moving overseas, please do subscribe and let me know your thoughts and feelings and what you want to see down below. This is very exciting for us. It feels like it's been a long time coming. I knew years ago that I wanted to move to Germany at some point in my 20s. I'm 28 now, so we're cutting it a little bit close. <laughs> But this is something that we are both so excited for. It's not going to be easy. There are going to be hiccups and bumps along the way, but we are so thrilled for this. And yes, I will aim to start doing some videos in German once we've been there for a bit. So um, take care and I will see you again soon. Tschüss.